Hello and welcome back everyone to another video here. Um, so today's video is going to be something a little bit different here. Um, I actually filmed a video from one of my good friends, um, Eleanor Moseman. Um, she is, <laughs> where do I even start? She is a um, conservationist, she is a photojournalist, a photographer of course. Um, she wants to brainshot the more video work, um, which I'll share here in a moment, of um, a book that she created, a little photo book of uh, some of her travels to Tibet and photographing monks and the culture there. And so this is a really fun project that we got to work on together um, just for a couple hours in the evening. And uh, yeah, I think it's really great. But um, she's a wonderful person to talk to, very energetic, um, very enthusiastic, um, just always a fun time. And um, you know, on, on my end, it's more she's something of a mentor, um, really helping me with my photography business and um, the creative and artistic side of it, of course. And also learning about a lot of technical stuff like photo editing and um, just you know stuff with exposure and just basically everything. So yeah, she's very, very helpful. Um, a great person to just talk to and talk about traveling and outdoors um, and, and just all the adventures and you know life experiences she's really been on. And um, not only that, but just the story she has and the important um, awareness she wants to provide through her photographs here, um, which this you know short little five and a half minute video will show. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's a lot of fun to work on it. Um, I've had her on my podcast before, the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. Um, she was a great guest, um, just lots of fun to talk to as always. And um, you know, I met her through uh, Front Street actually, because um, she has a studio there as well. So, and that's where we filmed this, of course, too. Um, so she's going to go over, as you can see uh, behind me. This um, she has a wall of different photographs that she's printed and framed, and then she'll go towards the uh, photo book and tell you more about that. But I'll roll the video here and um, hopefully enjoy it. It's been nearly three years since I abruptly left Tibet when COVID changed the world as we know it. Uh, since then, I've been based in Dayton, Ohio, here in my studio at Front Street. I have been studying Tibetan language and going through a decade plus of archives uh, that I captured while being based in China for nearly 13 years. If you don't know who I am, I'm Eleanor Moseman, photojournalist, storyteller, and cultural conservationist. For the last 10 years, my passion has been documenting and recording people, cultures, and traditions that are quickly disappearing. And this is actually a collection of images from the six dharmas of Naropa ceremony. Um, from the research that I've been able to find, there are only two of these ceremonies that exist in this world. And I am probably the only foreign photographer to have documented the ceremony at Palpong Monastery, which is near Daga, the Gartsa Tibetan Autonomous Region. This is actually the monastery set into the mountains. From what the locals told me that when the People's Liberation Army came in during the 1950s that the Tibetans had heard about this, and the Tibetans had actually hid in these mountains and waited for the Chinese to come in, and the Chinese were stuck in the valley, and from the smiles, uh, that they expressed to me that it was quite a massacre of the Chinese when they tried to come in. This ceremony actually is the ending of a three-year, three-month, three-week, and three-day meditation. The monks would actually go up into the mountains and meditate in the caves. And these cave openings would be closed with rocks. But with modern times, they go to a dormitory that is further remote into the mountains and away from the community. This is actually one of my favorite moments. It might not be my favorite photograph, but this moment stands so vividly in my mind. In ancient times, the locals would go up to the caves and open up the caves to let the, let the monks come out and return to the monastery. But with modern times, the locals actually come up to the back door of the monastery and beat on the door throughout the night until sunrise. Um, the monks are actually locked up into the monastery after the locals can come and watch them. Uh, I was actually given access to stay in the monastery after the locals were locked out. I was actually able to um, photograph the monks guarding the door from inside, and here's a view of what was going on outside. There were a couple times I saw some Tibetans fall off the steps, and even at one point, somebody had raised a shoe because it's just, it's, it's fun, it's wild, and um, I think it's a time 
uh, that the entire community gets to come together and celebrate this ceremony and see one another. It's also right before Tibetan New Year, so families are already there together. This is actually the monks getting ready to retreat from the monastery. And this is the practice of Tumo, where you're meditating to bring the inner fire within you to warm your body physically. And so this is taking place in February, and these monks are wearing a, just a simple white cloth. So along with these 12 photographs, I've also created a book containing these photographs and 15 additional photos. If you'd like to support my endeavors and what I do out in Tibet, and I do hope to return um, within the year or next year, I have this book available. So it's an 11 by 17 book, contains 25 images, and I hope to tell the story from the beginning to the end. Some people have commented about how it almost seems as if I wasn't there, like I had set up a camera and just disappeared. And I guess one of the special skills I developed being a five foot 11 white American in Asia was learning to disappear. Um, I do have some moments where the Tibetans would look at the camera, but for the most part, they were so they're just so dedicated to their religion and these, these practices that their focus was not on me, but this ceremony. And although I can't return in the immediate future, I do have an absolute dedication to photographing and sharing the stories of Tibetans. And I will return hopefully soon and perhaps I will just go to northern India or Nepal where there are um, Tibetans. So if you'd like to continue supporting me and my work and getting this important photography out into the world and share it with the people you know, you can bring a collection into your own home and share them with your friends and family. And the links are below and hopefully you'll see me again soon. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video there um, and hope you learned something too. Um, she has a really unique angle and perspective um, being an American, but also just traveling and spending so many years there um, over in East Asia. And uh, it's really just, she's a wealth of knowledge and stories from it. And maybe you're interested in purchasing a book from her as well, um, as she mentioned. Um, but you know, I think that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for watching everyone. Um, thank you, Ellen, for allowing me to film your video. And, um, you know, I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.